deposit sites in North America. So the issue is that we are trying to draw global conclusions on the collised evidence. The second issue is not that we look at earlier, not all organisms that live gets fossilized. And even the best fossil looks to tea, these are a small fraction of the original biodiversity, except for the very, very really good fossil site that is not really commonly seen. And result of these two issues, it's not too easy to pick up mass transition events. Due to a lack of information, the decision will look more error than it should be. A third issue is about the signal lift effect. Let's assume that there is a type of fossil X that is regularly distributed in the fossil record. There is a dividing line that separates the fossil burning rods below and one of the rods not burning X above. As you approach this boundary line, the likelihood of finding the fossil X decreases as your search area decreases. So you see here. And as a result of this, your loss appears of fossil X will be just below the boundary instead of at the boundary as you might expect. So as a result, the extinction event appears more greater. Okay, let's go on to my impact theory. The impact theory postulates that cause of the extinction is still made to the asteroid impact. The effect of this impact makes living condition impossible for dinosaurs, and this results in extinction over a short period of time. Uh, we can look at the geological evidence, and one big line of geological evidence is that iridium which play later between Cretaceous and tertiary sediments. This iridium is a rare element that many found on extraterrestrial objects and is very rare on the Earth's surface. And suggesting that the devastation of the dust cloud trumped up by the impact, <coughs> there was a short quartz like this found in the kidney foundry. And short quartz is basically the quartz, the outer structure, due to the pressure caused by the impact. 